none of that hate gon' work. Hey, hey. Now I don't know what you heard, but don't believe anyone that can't show you the word. Today we're going to discuss a parable that honestly a lot of churches never go to. It's in Matthew 22. And, and it's because of the very last incident where the, the, the host of the wedding asked one guy where is his wedding garment. And, and a lot of preachers don't want to deal with it because honestly it destroys their doctrine that because it destroys the doctrine of just accepting Jesus will get you into heaven. Because when we read this parable, we'll see that this guy accepted the invitation. But when he went to the wedding, he didn't have on any wedding garments. And when, when people, when preachers try to explain why this guy got kicked out, they, they give many bad reasons that anybody that understands the Bible would be like, wait, that makes no sense. So today we're going to go through this parable, all right? It's in Matthew 22, verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. So this is a parable. So Jesus here is, is talking about the king is God. He sent out his servants, which are his prophets, to the you know to invite people. But the people would not come. You know, the the Hebrews rejected the message that God was sending through his prophets. Verse 4. Again, he sent out other servants, so other prophets he sent out, saying, Tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. So again, he sent out other servants saying, look, everything is ready. All you got to do is come. But in verse five, it says, but they made light of it and went their ways, you know, and that's what people that reject the gospel do. They make light of the gospel, you know, whatever. It's not important. It's, I don't really care. And they go on their ways. They, they, they go on their own way. They, they're not going through the narrow way. They want to go to the, through the broad way that leads to destruction. One to his own farm, another to his, to his business. You know, so they, you know, they, they just went about their own ways. You know, they, they, they went back to work. You know, this message, this invitation was not that important to them. You know, that's what people that reject the gospel think of the gospel. It's not that big of a deal. I, I'd rather go to work. I'd rather go farm. This is not, you know, this does not benefit me. <clears throat> Verse six, and the rest seize his servants. So there were some that went, went on their way. There are others that seize his servants, the prophets, treated them spitefully and killed them. Okay, so that's what the Hebrews did to all the prophets that God sent to them. Verse seven, but when the king, but when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their city. Right. This verse is talking about A.D. seventy, when Jerusalem was destroyed by the Roman armies. You know, it says that God, the king, sent out his armies. You're like, wait a minute, Rome, Rome is not his armies. Well, God, in the Old Testament used Babylon against Judah and he said that that those were his um you know his forces that he's sending down as judgment so God could use the ungodly to achieve his purpose but after rejecting the prophet so many times God finally destroyed he killed those people he destroyed those murderers and burned up their city verse 8 then he said to his servants the wedding is ready but those who were invited were not worthy. So he said, look, those, those Hebrews were not worthy. You know, they, they had the invitation, but they rejected the invitation. Verse nine, therefore go into the highways and as many as you can find invite to the wedding. And that's the gospel invitation. You know, they, we go out into the highways and byways and invite people. That's our, that's what we do. But listen to this verse. Verse 10, 
So those servants went out into the highways and gathered all whom they found. Now listen to this, both good and bad. Okay, because this is going to explain why this guy got kicked out. So they went out, they invited, and they gathered people both good and bad. Meaning, what does this mean? That, that they invited, that people, you know, came into to this invitation that were good and bad. Meaning that somebody could come to the gospel out of sincerity. They want to, you know, go to the wedding. They want the the blessings of the gospel and they do it out of sincerity. But there are others who accept the invitation, but really they, they, they have bad motives. They're not there really for the gospel. They're there, I don't know, because they want com community. They want friendship. They, they want to belong. So, but they, they accept the invitation. So Christians got to be careful that just because somebody says they're a believer or accepts Jesus or accepts the gospel, it does not necessarily mean that they did it for the right motives. You know, it might've been like Jesus talked about the parable of the sower. There were, the seeds went out and some landed on good soil, some landed on rocky and some landed on bad soil. So you don't know what the condition of the person is that's accepting this invitation. The next verse, verse um, 11. No, in verse 10, I'm sorry. So those servants went out. Oh, no, okay. Wait, let me read it again, verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. So, you know, mission accomplished. This is what the king wanted. Verse 11. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So the king finally came. This is the, the coming of Christ. The king finally came in. He saw all the guests. Now, what does this mean? He saw the guests. Remember, judgment begins at the house of God. You know, God's not going to judge the world out there first. He's going to judge his house first. So he came, when he came, the first people he saw were his guests. But he found one that did not have on a wedding garment. Verse 12, so the king asked that guy, friend, he called him friend, all right? So that means he had a relationship with him. Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. So the, the, the king said, what are you doing? This is a wedding ceremony. You're coming in with flip-flops and shorts. What's wrong with you? And the guy was speechless. Now the question is why he was speechless? Because he knew, he knew better. This is the, he didn't just walk in like, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know what's going on. He knew, he knew better. Now the question is, okay, let me keep reading. Verse 13, then the king said to his servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So basically this guy without the wedding garment who accepted the invitation was bound hand and foot and cast into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So so what's the you know so what's the big deal? What what is God? What is Jesus trying to convey here? I mean, it's serious. I mean, this guy didn't have on a wedding garment. Now the question is, what is the wedding garment? If we go to Revelation nineteen verse eight, I believe, right? Eight, uh, verse uh, Revelation eighteen verse nine. I'm sorry, I got it backwards. Revelation eighteen verse nine. It says this. This is talking about Jesus' second coming and the, the bride has made herself ready for him and the bride is coming to Jesus. And it says this, And to her was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Okay? So that's the fine linen. What is the fine linen? The righteous acts of the saints. All right? So... When we go back and apply this to this parable, the guy, the king is asking this man, how is it that you don't have on any wedding garment? Meaning, 
Where are your righteous acts of your saints? He had no righteous acts. This guy, he was one of those that accepted the invitation that were bad. And he thought because he accepted the invitation that, that he was in. And that's the danger that many Christians are in today. And mostly because of their false lying preachers out there that say, oh, you accepted Jesus? Praise God, you're saved. That's it, you're, you, that's all you need. You confess with your mouth. Here in Revelations 18 verse 9, it says that the fine linen is the righteous act of the saints. This guy didn't have on his wedding garment. You, you got to be arrayed in fine linen. This guy had no actions, no righteousness in him. And that's why he was cast out. You know, because if, if we take it literally, you'll be like, wow. So, so, so the king cast him out into other darkness, whether it be weeping and gnashing the cheek for, for clothes? No, it's not for clothes because he had no righteousness. You know, so that, that, that is the biblical answer. Now, I, I've seen some people try to uh, explain away, not explain, but explain away why this guy got kicked out. But usually they just go on for 10 minutes talking and, and saying nothing and really not backing it up by scripture. Here is the scripture of why, what is the clothes that he was supposed to have on and why he, he got kicked out, because he didn't have those clothes. He was one of those that were the bad ones. And we'll close it off with the last verse in verse 14. For many are called, but few chosen. So the gospel call goes out to everyone, but in the end, the, the, there's only a few that are going to be chosen. You know, it's going to be, that's what, in Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus talked about that many are going to say to him, Lord, Lord. And Jesus is going to tell many of them, I never knew you. And, and so was with this guy. He came into the, he accepted the invitation, was sitting down at the wedding banquet, which is in Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 18, is when Jesus comes, that's the wedding. He's there at the wedding, but he's going to get kicked out. So we got to take this parable seriously. And we got to look at this parable. I, 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 I want you to hear what, how the others uh, misinterpret it, misinterpret this parable. But if what the way I'm breaking it down makes sense, then you should take it seriously. You should ask yourself, am I doing right things? What am I doing? Not just, oh, I believe. And that's it. I accepted the invitation because this guy accepted the invitation. And guess what? He got cast into outer darkness. We got to make sure that we're living like the, the book of Revelation says about those that went through the tribulation that they had the testimony of Jesus and kept the commandments of God. Are you keeping the commandments of God? You know, are you doing what God tells you to do? Is there any unforgiveness in your life? Are you, are you striving to love your enemies? Are you, um, you know, doing do to others as you have, have done to you? Is there any root of bitterness? Because those things will disqualify you from the kingdom of God. Don't just Hold on and say, oh, I got the invitation. I accepted the invitation and I'm going to the wedding. Yeah, you, 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 you got the invitation and you will go to the wedding. But you don't want to go to the wedding. And then the master would say, friend, where is your wedding garment? And then he kicks you out into utter, utter darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, so we got to make sure that our faith is based on the word of God. Not what some preacher half tells you. Say, oh, you accepted the invitation. You're good. Because unfortunately, that, I, I, this, this guy probably thought too. He's like, hey, I accept the invitation. I'm good. So I don't care. I'll, I'll go in my flip-flop and shorts to this wedding um, ceremony. Make sure, make your calling and election sure based on scripture. Not on your own self-delusion. Not on some lying preacher. You got to have the righteous acts. Like Revelation 18.9 says, the righteous acts of the saints is the fine linen. That's the garment that we're clothed with. Amen. Amen.